The Lord be with you. Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to this uh, time of worship together on this glorious day. Whether you're here in church or joining us from home, it's wonderful to have you with us this morning. And so we continue in prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. In a moment's silence, we bring into our hearts and minds the ways in which we've failed to love God and to love our neighbor. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we stand, we pray the collect for the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The reading is taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, 
chapter 8, verses 10 to 15. <clears throat> and in this matter, I am given my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by com <clears throat> completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your presence, abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, be in my speaking and in our listening that together we would know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. In Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. So with this uh, sermon, we continue our exploration of uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians following, following the Darson initiative, A Generous June. Paul's letter to uh, the Corinthians gives us an astonishing picture of the different communities of the early church. The people in Macedonia one of the poorest church communities in the New Testament era, has astounded people by their generosity. They have given what many people thought was beyond their ability to give, and in so doing, they have compromised their own well-being for the sake of the church in Jerusalem that was suffering dire starvation. Paul also tells us about the generosity of other churches, such as the church in Antioch, that not only prayed and fasted, but equipped Paul and Barnabas to plant the first church in Europe, in Philippi. And now, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, which is another amazing community. It's creative, wealthy, and within the church there are incredible gifts being exercised. Orators are speaking speeches of compelling nature about the Christian faith. Spiritual gifts seem to be in abundance, Everything you could imagine is going on in the Corinthian church. But Paul then asked them not only to excel in the gifts that they've been given, but to excel in their giving too. He challenges them to give out of grace, out of the gift and understanding of who God is. It's powerful stuff. It's inspiring stuff. It says, you know, you can't outgive God. God, who became poor for our sakes, that we 
might become rich. To live a life of gratitude is a response to what God has given to us and it leads to us giving of ourselves, our time, our money, our possessions. Not as some duty, but simply because we've been caught up in a cycle of grace and of giving. But then, in these verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul shifts gear. He becomes very practical for a moment. It's a well-crafted stewardship document that comes with this challenge. There are places of deep need that we as followers of Christ should respond to. Paul goes even further, effectively telling the wealthy Corinthian church that if you've got plenty, you ought to be giving plenty. Paul never refers to tithing in his teachings as that was an Old Testament concept. Instead, he's asking us to go beyond rule-bound proportional giving. He is in effect saying, give if you like, but give until it begins to cost us something. And so he points to the needs of the other churches and says to Corinth, you know, there's mutuality about this. We belong to one another. We enter into each other's mission and ministry by what we give and how we give. As this sermon was being prepared, David Ford had written in the Church Times challenging the church that we ought to forget about deploying our clergy based on what people can afford to pay and instead be much more radical. Deploy your clergy based on need for the ministry rather than the ability of a local community to pay. Our own bishop would say that it's a bit more complicated than that. We live as a community of communities in a diocese. There's a matrix of seeking to provide ministry, uh, leadership and pastoral care, as well as responding to tough mission opportunities. But nonetheless, I believe that the picture of the early church 2,000 years ago is deeply relevant to the 21st century. It's about us belonging to one another, really seeing one another as part of the same body despite all our differences. There's an issue of equity about this. In our own diocese and in many of the dioceses around the country, there are new priorities about reaching communities that are not traditionally part of the church. And increasingly, in the 21st century, it's about reaching younger people in urban areas. And so, it should be our hope and prayer that as we grapple with Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, we enter not only the life of a church 2,000 years ago, but also see and experience something of how God's word starts to speak to us here and now. And most especially, that we might see Jesus more clearly, that we might see his astonishing self-giving to us and for us, that we might see our response as we enter more fully into that truth, a response that hopefully mirrors something of the Macedonian church, an eye-watering generosity, that we might more fully know and see that you can't outgive God. The more we give, the more he gives to us. Martin Luther spoke of three conversions. He said, your heart needs to be converted because when you experience the love of God, the overwhelming love of God for you, that transforms everything. Your second conversion is the conversion of the mind. When you start to think in a Christian way about the world we live in and the community that gathers in the name of God. And thirdly, he says, your purse or wallet needs converting. And if your purse, your wallet is not converted, has your heart or your mind been converted at all? In a much more contemporary way, Billy Graham talked of this conversion. He said, your checkbook is your theological document. Look at your bank statement. See where your money is spent. Does that reflect the priorities you have glimpsed in the kingdom of God? I think 
in 2021, it is the list of our digital payees that will begin to give us a glimpse of how much we have begun the journey of grace and generosity, a journey that the Macedonian church began all those years ago, a journey that Paul encourages the church in Corinth to take, and a journey he encourages each one of us to embark on as well. Let's pray. Lord, for a heart that is softened by the love of God, for a mind that is renewed in the understanding of who you are and what you call us to, and for the gift of my own financial resources into the life of the church and the wider community, I pray for that transformation too. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we stand to profess together our faith in our generous, loving Heavenly Father. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us now pray for the church, for the world, and for all human need. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. We pray in particular for all Christian charities offering care and practical assistance to those in poverty or undergoing persecution for their faith. This month we are praying for UCCF, our mission of the month, spreading your gospel through Christian unions in colleges and universities. We pray also for our link diocese of Kigemi, as the churches there reopen. Give all the congregations and their leaders resilience at this time and confidence in their future. Today is the second anniversary of Simon's licensing as vicar of this parish. We thank you, Father, for his energy, innovation and leadership throughout these unusual times. We thank you too for the other members of the ministry team, Diane, Alan, Mary, Tony and John and ask for your blessing on them all. Strengthen Tim, Debbie and David, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united by in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. 
Heavenly Father, please guide our thoughts and decisions during generous June. Direct us to offer our money, time, talents and skills to support this parish and the wider church. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all nations and their governments, especially the members of the G7 meeting in Cornwall today. May your Holy Spirit lead the rich nations to support the poor and the strong nations to protect the weak. Guide them to provide vaccines to the most impoverished nations so every country may have the opportunity to develop in its own way. We pray that all who occupy high office in their nation will govern wisely and well, seeking the welfare of their own people and that of other nations. May they work with other leaders in partnership to, partnership to bring stability, well-being and peace to the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. This week we ask your blessing for our neighbours in Knoll Road and Horlock Road, and we pray too for the members of Brockenhurst Choir. May they soon be reunited and able to resume rehearsals and concerts. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to mind all who are sick, and in particular those who have asked for our prayer. David, Jess, Fred, Roger, Janet, Brian, Janet, Pauline, Jennifer, and in hospital, Kay. In a moment's silence, we pray for any others known to us personally. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, Reginald Torrington and Don Wooler. May their families and friends be comforted by the knowledge that they are now with you, Father, in life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come now to the sharing of um, the peace, a time when we recognise that we belong to one another. Would you please stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer one another a sign of peace. Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us the bread of life and cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour, by the power of the Holy Spirit who took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to our Heavenly Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with thankful hearts, we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Just a uh, few notices before the final um, dismissal. A reminder that this Tuesday, so that's the 15th of June, um, 7 to about 8 o'clock, we have the first of our pop-up workshops in our um, theme of Year of the Bible. Um, we've got Gareth Davis from the Bible Society coming to help us think about how we can uh, better study the Bible. And that's not going to be um, a boring lecture on how to do that. It's um, giving us resources um, and encouragement about different ways of doing that. So if you're interested, do let the um, parish office know, um, church office know today or tomorrow, or let me know, contact me. So I've got your email because I need to send you a Zoom link if you want to take part in that. Uh, be a good thing to do. Gareth is great, so do think about that. And then there's one on the 13th of June, um, which I'll remind you of um, uh, nearer that time, about how to read the Bible devotionally. Again, a very practical um, help for that. And in the autumn, we've got Bible and archaeology, and I think Bible and art as well, so other ones coming up, so keep your eyes open for those. Generous June um, continues, as I said. Um, do make sure you've picked up your stewardship pack. Um, there's some of you here. I know that uh, um, some of those packs are for you. Um, and if you see a neighbour then that's there, take that and post it through their letterbox would be really handy. And most importantly of all, if we've given you a gift day declaration form in your um, uh, stewardship pack, do fill that in and return it because we can't claim gift aid on all those lovely gifts you give us unless one of those forms has been filled in. And they have to be filled in every four or five years or so. So we're, we're renewing those forms. So please have a look at that if you can. Uh, and then Mother's Union ha on Monday, 21st June. A reminder that um, they've got Rachel Knoll, otherwise known as the Pink Vicar sometimes from Pennington, um, coming to share something of how she came to faith and became a vicar. So um, do go to that. I commend Rachel to you. She's got a very interesting um, story. Would you please stand? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.